know that healing is a Bible principle. We just have to look at the life of Jesus. And when we look at the life of Jesus, we see that he spent more time healing than preaching. I would also like to suggest that his very ability to heal also indicates if he can heal the problems in the body, he can certainly heal the problems in the mind. So I would like to take a little journey in this presentation of what the Bible says about healing. I'm a fifth generation Australian Scottish descent. When I grew up going to Sunday school every Sunday, going to church, I never heard healing from the Bible. We certainly heard stories of Jesus, but it was almost as if that was long, long ago. And there was really no connection between the health of the body and the health of the mind. There was no connection between sickness in the body and salvation, sickness of the body and the, the role of knowing Jesus has in our life. It wasn't until I was probably a teenager and began to go to restaurants, began to meet other people, that I realized that healing the human body is not just a, a medication from the doctor, even though that's, that's the way I was brought up. The Bible says in 3 John chapter 1, verse 2, and it is God speaking, he says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou may prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. So we say here very clearly that, that God wants us to be healthy. You see, when we're healthy, when everything is working well in the body, we are certainly much happier people. Let's go to, it's a very well-known one, and that is in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, where the Bible says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, I beseech, that means I implore you, I plead with you, that you present your bodies living sacrifice. Now, this is very clear. There's no, there's no two ways about this. Or as we say in Australia, there's no beating around the bush as to the meaning of this. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies living sacrifices. Every word of the Lord is pure. He is a shield to them that put their trust in him. Every word that I look at. You'll also see in 2 Timothy 3.16, the Bible says, All scripture was given by inspiration for God and is profitable for reproof, instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect. All scripture. So let's have a look at every single word. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. I'd like to suggest that it's only by the mercies of God that we can present our bodies living sacrifices holy and acceptable to God. This I'd also like to suggest is referring to the lamb that was presented when someone sinned in the Old Testament. They could not present any lamb. They had to present the best. And we know that this was an illustration of Jesus, the spotless lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. The reason why it is so reasonable is we are the winners. We are the winners when we're living in a body that works. It's nice to live in a body that works. Unfortunately, today, the only group of people that are living in a body that works are the teenagers, or the children, the early 20s. But I think you'll you'll agree with me that children are getting sicker and sicker. Teenagers are getting sicker and sicker. Newton's third law of motion states that to every action, there's an equal and an opposite reaction. There is a reason for this sickness. Proverbs 26 verse 2 states that the curse causeless shall not come. In other words, no disease, no discomfort, no sickness comes without a cause. There is always a reason. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God. It's such a reasonable service. And then it goes on in verse 2. It says, be not conformed to this world 
but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good, acceptable and perfect will of God. And we know God's perfect will is that we prosper and be in health. Be not conformed to this world. We don't have to think for a moment the way this world eats. All we have to do is look at the television. All we have to do is even go to the supermarket. And we just look at the food that is the most freely available. And whatever you see in the supermarket that is most freely available, it's freely available because that's what the people are eating. That's what the people want. We've come to a time on planet Earth where fast food abounds. We're such a busy society. Many people do not think about lunch till lunchtime. <laughs> they don't think about lunch till they get a hunger pang. And so what they want is something right then and right there. And if you go out to the shopping mall, there it all is. <laughs> You've got this huge selection of food that is right there, right now, just for what you want. See, in the old days, down on the farm, Mother prepared breakfast. She got up early and she prepared the meal. After breakfast, she began to think about lunch. Maybe on her fuel stove, she'd have some beans cooking in the corner. She thought about it. But today, many women are working. Many women have to work because they've got a nice house and they need two wages to pay off that house. So, so many other things come into the equation. And unfortunately today, the value of a woman staying at home is not seen as it was in ancient times. So you see, all of these things come into equations. Be not conformed to this world. We know very clearly, you don't have to look twice to see the effect of this way the world eats. You'll see that when a person stops eating what's called the junk food, the fast food, and starts to implement better lifestyle habits, yes, they begin to recover and they can begin to heal. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. Now, why does it say that? Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Because the mind controls the body, and it is in the mind that we make these decisions. And for someone to stop eating the fast food, which is very tantalizing, which is very addictive, especially with all the sugars that are put in it. To be able to change from that, there has to be some incentive. And that's why the, the renewing of the mind, the renewing of the mind looks at the body a little differently. The renewing of the mind sees now the body as what, what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 3, 17, where the Bible says, No, you're not, that ye are the temple of God, and the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, because the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. To be able to see it like that, we almost need to have our mind transformed. When we have a transformed mind, we begin to see the body as God's creation. Because so often people think, this is my body, I can do what I want. But when you start to read the Bible, when you start to see God's view of the body, when you see in 1 Corinthians 3, I think it's 16, No, you're not, that ye are the temple of God, and the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, because the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. I would like to suggest that God doesn't have to destroy because many people destroy themselves by what they're doing to their body. And if we go over to 1 Corinthians 6.19, we, we look at it in, an, in a slightly different light with even stronger words. The writer now says, What? Know you not that your body is the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? There it defines it. The, the, the temple is the body. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of God. The temple of God, a temple. A temple houses God. A temple, this temple houses the Holy Spirit. And then it says, for you are bought with a price. 
And we know that that price was the precious blood of Jesus. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So we are not our own. And there needs to be a transforming of the mind to be able to see that. That's why God says in Ezekiel 36, 26, he says, I will take away your heart of stone and I will give you a heart of flesh and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and you shall do them. Cause you to walk in my statutes. There are laws that govern the running of the human body. There are the laws that God gave Moses, the Ten Commandments, and we know that they are God's laws. But in a little book called Christ Objects Lesson, Ellen White says in page 347, transgression of physical law is transgression of the moral law. For God is as truly the author of the physical law as he is of the moral law. He has written his law with his own finger on every muscle, every nerve, every faculty with which we have been entrusted. And every misuse of any part of our organism is a violation of that law. All should become intelligent as to the human frame and how to keep it in the condition necessary to do the work of the Lord. The relation that exists between the spiritual life and the physical organism is one of the most important branches of education. And I'd like to suggest one of the most neglected. The human organism needs to be carefully preserved and developed that through humanity, the divine nature might be revealed in all of its fullness. Notice that, not just preserved, but developed. So how do we preserve it? How do we develop it? We're also talking about certain laws here. Transgression of physical law is transgression of the moral law. They're strong words. They're not my words. We know that sin is the transgression of the law. We know that we are not to break God's laws his Ten Commandments. But this brings another light into it. Transgression of physical law is transgression of the moral law. You cannot be guilty of breaking physical law if you don't know the physical laws. But I believe we will be held accountable if we have not presented our bodies living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God. Let's go back to page 347 of Christ Objects Lesson where she said all should become intelligent as the human frame. We need to know something about the house we live in. When we know something about the house we live in, then we know how to look after it. Proverbs 14 verse 6 says, Knowledge is easy to him that understands. I believe it is our responsibility to know something about this house as the writer says, all should become intelligent as to the human frame and how to keep it in the condition necessary to do the work of the Lord. How do we become intelligent? Let's go to the little book, Ministry of Healing, page 127, where Ellen White says, the only hope of better things is the education of people in the right principles. Let the physicians teach the people that restorative powers lies not in drugs, but in nature. Disease is an effort of nature to free the system from conditions that arise because of a violation of the laws of health. Here's this violation of the laws of health. So what are the laws of health? Pure air, sunshine, abstemishness, rest, exercise, proper diet, use of water, trust in divine power, these are the true remedies. They're the foundation. We can actually never move away from them. They are the true remedies. We need to look at those true remedies. H how do we fare against those true remedies? They're for the foundation. Yes, water therapies can help. Yes, herbs can help. But that foundation must ever be laid. It must be laid. That, that's square one. In case of sickness, the cause should be ascertained. How do we ascertain the cause? We come to the person, we look at their life. The best one to start with is the one in the mirror. We look at our life and we look at it against those eight laws. Are we breathing fresh air? Is our bedroom a healthy place? We spend a third of our life in that room. Are we breathing fresh air while we sleep? Is the, is the area in our bedroom conducive 
to us getting fresh air. Sunshine. Abstemish this. Don't take anything into the body that will harm it and taking in moderation the good things. Are we going to bed early? Many people today want to forget this one. They'd like to move on to the next one. <laughs> Some people say, but, but I, I've got to study. You know, the best study time is to go to bed at eight and get up at four. You'll get those eight hours. Eight hours, not negotiable. I like to, I like to use the BHSC method. Bible, history, science and common sense. Historically, people did not have the mental illness they're having today. Because historically, there were no electrical lights to keep us awake, no televisions, no iPads, no computers. It is these artificial lights that are keeping us awake when the sun has already gone down. And if there were no electric lights, when the sun goes down, our brain would know it is time to slow down. Even though the lights are going, your body knows that the sun has gone down. I, re I read an interview of a 116-year-old man to his secrets on longevity. He says, I rise with the sun and I go down with the sun. It's easy to get the children to sleep when the lights are dull. When it's dark, you put them in a hot bath, then you read them a nice relaxing story, ideally from the Bible, beautiful stories in the Bible that children love, and then ease them straight into bed. Many children go to bed late because the house is lit up like a tr Christmas tree. <laughs> Lights are on, the television's going very hard for the brain to wind down. Transgression of physical law is transgression of the moral law. God has written his law with his own finger on every muscle, every faculty with which we have been entrusted. Every part of our body knows it when we go to bed late. Four hours sleep, you don't feel good. Six hours sleep, you feel okay. So that's a total deception, that one. Exercise, are you exercising every day? I don't have time. You don't have time not to. Make time. What are you doing with your day? Have a look at your time. How do you spend your time? How much time are you on technology? That's not going to do for you what exercise will do for you. Proper diet. Go to the Garden of Eden diet. You cannot improve on the Garden of Eden diet. God said, oh, behold, I've given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth. And every tree in the which of the tree is a fruit bearing seed. He says the seed to you it shall be for meat. What's the meat? That's the main substance. The seed of a plant is like the chicken's egg. It contains all the essential, essential nutrients required for life. What's a seed? There's your grains, so many grains. There's your legumes, so many legumes. There's your seeds, so many seeds. There's your nuts, so many nuts. We can have a wonderful variety. And then your fruits, your vegetables. The vegetables came in, especially the green leafies after the fall. They're healing and we need healing. In case of sickness, the cause should be ascertained. Compare your life with those eight laws. They're the standard. You see, they're the true remedies. Remember, sickness happens because of a violation of those basic laws of health. Are you drinking adequate water? Are you trusting in God? Do you believe in this great God of heaven? It's easy to believe in him when you read the Bible, when you see what he has done for us. No wonder Job 22:21 says, Acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto thee. Acquaint now thyself with him. Acquaint now yourself with your Saviour. We have the Bible. We have beautiful books like the the uh, Desire of Ages, beautiful book on the life of Jesus. You will fall in love with the Saviour when you read of him. Then you will be able to trust him and you will know he is worthy to have your trust like no one else is worthy. In case of sickness, the course should be ascertained. If you don't turn the tap off, you're still going to be mopping up in the other corner. We must keep this scientific. If someone says to you, whether it be a whether it be a physician or a specialist or a naturopath or a nutritionist, when you have a problem, 
it's just you. That's very unscientific, no. There is always a cause, that's basic science. Newton's third law of motion, to every action there's an equal and an opposite reaction. This law was already defined in the Bible. Proverbs 26 verse 2, the curse causeless shall not come. It was already defined in the Bible. In Galatians 6 verse 7, be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall also reap. There is always a cause. How do you find the cause? Have a look at those remedies. When did the person first get sick? Look at the time around that. My husband's a very black and white man. If he doesn't feel well, he sits down and he analyzes the last 24 hours. The last 24 hours is usually a fairly good idea of why he doesn't feel ill. How much sleep did he get? How much water did he drink? What's the, what, was, what was the last meal? Ha, have you had some bad news? Or is, is the pump broken? Or did you, you just investigate. We should all be private investigators investigating why these things are so. In case of sickness, the course should be ascertained. Unhealthful conditions changed. Wrong habits corrected. How do you know what the, the unhealthful conditions are? Well, we've also got common sense, haven't we? I think everyone knows that a mouldy house is a sick house. You read what the Bible says. It says if there's mould in the house, the house has to be destroyed. It has to be dismantled and taken outside the city to an unclean place. What would we call it today? In Australia, we call it the tip. But today we've got something they didn't have in Bible times. We've got chemicals. We've got electromagnetic fields. There are people getting incredibly ill who are living under big telephone wires. Did you know that the electromagnetic field under those huge big wires is 500 times what usually is? Every farmer knows if his cattle graze under those wires, they'll have stillborns, they'll have deformities. We lived in a rainforest and up the back uh, away from us, a few kilometres away, there were big towers. And my children would go on hikes up there because underneath the wires, the plants grew all strange. We have everlasting daisies. They're called everlasting daisies because they're a little bit like straw. So you can put them in a vase and they'll, they'll keep for ages because they're just like straw. They're like a dried flower. There'd be everlasting daisies with five centres. There'd be all this mutation in plant life. If there's mutation in plant life, if there's mutation in the cow, there's going to be mutations in the human body. Unhealthful conditions changed. Have a look at your house. Have a look at the chemical exposure. We didn't have chemical exposure back in Bible times. We're dealing with a few more dangers today than they dealt with in Bible times. Wrong habits corrected. How do you know what's a wrong habit? Just look at those laws. Those laws are the standard. Late nights, not drinking enough water, no fresh air, devitalized food. A lot of people today are having reactions and intolerances to the wheat. And then we find out that in the 50s, the wheat was changed. It went through intensive crossbreeding, it changed it. Praise God, you can still get ancient grain breads. You can still get breads made out of kamut, out of uh, spelt. They're called ancient grains because they were from the original wheat. But I find when people have allergies, almost 99% of the time, there's a, it's to the wheat. So stopping the wheat. One lady said, oh, but I eat the whole wheat bread. I said, well, I'm glad you eat the whole wheat. But it's the wheat, <laughs> but it's organic wheat. I'm glad it's organic wheat. It's not being grown with poisons. Glyphosate or Roundup, that's poisoning a lot of people today. But it is still the hybridized wheat. Go to the ancient grains. Go to the grains the way it used to be. So what we're doing here is we're investigating. In case of sickness, the cause should be ascertained, unhealthful conditions changed, wrong habits corrected. Then nature is to be assisted in her efforts to expel impurities and re-establish right conditions back in the system. Nature is to be assisted. How do we assist nature in her efforts to expel impurities? 
How do we expel impurities? We expel impurities through the skin. The skin is an amazing organ. It not only breathes, it also absorbs and it throws off waste. And to increase the body's ability to throw off waste, we need to be drinking more water. Maybe find a steam sauna where you'll perspire a lot. A lot of waste will come out that way. Make sure the colon's working well because waste is coming out of the colon. Make sure you're drinking adequate water to thin the blood so it's easier for your kidneys to filter your blood. Your kidneys filter your blood. Make sure that you're stimulating your vacuum cleaner system every day. Did you know you have an internal vacuum cleaner? It's the lymphatic system. What stimulates the lymphatic system is rebounding, those little mini trampolines. All should become intelligent as to the human frame and how to keep it in the condition necessary to do the work of the Lord. This is what I'm sharing with you now. We need to know about that body. If you don't know how the body works, then you cannot know how it heals. So that's square one. All should become intelligent as to the human frame. Every single person. When I was 18 and it was time to get my license, my father told me I could not get my license until I'd learnt how, a, how an engine works. I was not happy because my girlfriends didn't have to learn how an engine works before they got their license. But doesn't it make a lot of sense? I see the sense in it now. I didn't then. I remember sitting with my dad every night where he'd explain how the engine works. I can remember something about uh, spark plugs going off, causing pistons to go up and down. I think he'd be very proud to hear that I still know those little bits and pieces. How much more important to know something about the house that we're living in? God designed the body to heal itself. It is a self-healing organism and it will heal itself if you give it the right conditions. So going back to page 127 of the Ministry of Healing, in case of sickness, the cause should be ascertained, unhelpful conditions changed, wrong habits corrected. Then nature is to be assisted in her efforts to expel impurities and re-establish right conditions back in the system. It is important both to understand the principles involved in the treatment of the sick and have a practical training to enable one rightly to use this knowledge. How do we get the practical training? I'll tell you how I got the practical training. I started to do it on myself. I started to do little bits on my children. There are books out there that tell you what herbs are and what you can use them for. There are books on natural remedies as to, as to, how, to how to make them, how, how to apply them, when to apply them. So when, when the Ministry of Healing says it's important both to understand the principles involved in the treatment of the sick, there's your anatomy and physiology. Every home should have an anatomy and physiology book. Go to the nurse's or the doctor's second-hand shop and you'll get, you'll get the anatomy and physiology book from 10 years ago for a quarter of the price that they're sold for new. Start to read about your kidneys, start to read about your, your colon, your skin. Now there might be some things in there you don't understand, but you can just do what I did. I, I would read and didn't quite get that bit. Ah, yes, I understand that bit. The more you read, the more you will begin to understand. It is important both to understand the principles involved in the treatment of the sick and have a practical training that will enable one rightly to use this knowledge. Dr. Kellogg wrote many books on hydrotherapy and that was one of the first books that I got. Vance Ferrell, he's a writer who put together Healthy Living and it was a book that the first part of the book was Ministry of Healing and the second part of the book was Dr. Kellogg's Water Treatments. That was one of my first books so that must have come out in maybe the 70s. Yeah, I think about the 70s and I would just read it and I would, I would do it. I would just do it and it was by doing it that I learnt. It's a good idea in a mother's group for the mothers to get together and discuss these things and maybe practice on each other. That's a great pastime. It's good to have the practice and the knowledge before someone gets sick. 
The use of natural remedies requires an amount of care and effort that many are not prepared to give. Nature's process of healing is gradual and to the impatient it seems slow. So the use of natural remedies, did you know that 60, 50, 60 years ago, nurses were taught hydrotherapy? I have their textbook. It's Knight's book of hydrotherapy for nurses, but not today. Because the use of natural remedies requires an amount of care and effort that many are not prepared to give. It takes a lot of physical effort and time to do the natural remedies. So if someone has a headache, what we always do at our retreats, we give them a hot foot bath. See, when you put your feet in hot water, it draws excess blood down to the feet. And when someone's got a headache, there's often congested blood in the head. So just the very act of putting feet in hot water brings the blood down to that area. So what we do is we tend them every five minutes. We put a little bit more hot in. We put cold on their head. Do they need a little bit of a neck massage to release the tension there? Maybe that's contributing to it. But can you see that's, that's care and effort. We have to get the bucket. We have to get a towel. We have to have the kettle beside, uh, the, the ice water to pat on the head, the massaging the, the neck. Whereas what would most people do? They would just take a painkiller. Can you see why we veered away from the natural remedies? They do take an amount of care and effort. Also, nature's process of healing and upbuilding is gradual and to the impatient it seems slow. I'm impatient, I want to be better tomorrow. <laughs> but it takes time. It takes time and there are some lovely Bible verses that I share with people to encourage them to give it time. And one is found in Galatians 6 verse 9. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we will reap if we faint not. Just keep going. Also, Hebrews chapter 10 verses 35, starting at 35. Cast not away therefore thy confidence in the which is great recompense of reward, for ye have need of patience, in that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. For the just shall live by faith. If any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them that draw back under perdition, but of them that believe in the saving of the soul. The just shall live by faith. We need to have faith in this body that God put in it uh, an ability to heal itself. And it will heal itself if you give it the right conditions. It takes time. Just as a baby grows, just as a plant grows, so the body heals. I have found with many people, their sickness is many, many years in the making, maybe 20 years. So I say to them, the good news is it won't take 20 years to undo, but it might take two. <laughs> but what I have found with the natural remedies, within, within a short period of time, they're starting to experience relief. With medicine, if you have a symptom, the doctor will treat that symptom, often with a drug, that will silence the symptom. But with natural, natural treatment, you have a symptom, like with the headache. With the headache, you've got a sore head, so you deal with that straight away. You go straight to the discomfort, because when you have a symptom, it's basically the body saying, I need help in this area, please. And you'll try different things. And if the different things you try bring relief, the body's saying, thank you, that's what I need. So both with natural medicine and both with drug medication, both are treating the symptoms. But remember, the symptoms are the cry of the body saying, this is where I need you. This is where I need help. The drugs silence it, whereas natural remedies bring relief. And when, when the natural remedies bring relief, that's basically the body saying, thank you. This is what I need. The use of natural remedies requires an amount of care and effort that many are not prepared to give. The body's process of healing and upbuilding is gradual and to the impatient it seems slow. The surrender of hurtful indulgences requires a sacrifice. But in the end it will be found that nature untrammeled does her work wisely and well. I have just recited to you the two 
paragraphs from the Ministry of Healing, which I believe and have found to contain everything that we need for direction and guidance as to how to give the body the conditions so that it can revive and heal and restoration can happen. I've also shown you from the Bible that there are definite verses in there that indicate that we are to present our bodies living sacrifices. Also, as in 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17, know you not that you are the temple of God and the spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple we are. I'd like to share with you another verse. Let's go over to 2 Corinthians 4, verse 6, where the Bible says, For God, who commanded the light to shine forth in darkness, has shined in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Now we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Here's the earthen vessel. Let's go back. For God, who commanded the light to shine forth in darkness, has shined in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. We have this treasure. What's the treasure? The light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. We have this treasure in these earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of ourselves. For we are troubled on every side, but not distressed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed ever bearing about in the body, here we come back to this body, ever bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the life also of him might be made manifest in our bodies. Let's go back to Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, acceptable and perfect will of God. Who are we proving it to? We're proving it to ourselves. In 1 Thessalonians 5.21, the Bible says, Prove all things. Prove it. Prove all things. This is a challenge from God. Prove it. Prove it. Try it. Test it. Prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. I began proving this oh, 40 years ago now and I'm holding fast to it because I have found it works. And I thank God that he's given me the opportunity to share these basic principles with many. And yes, technology can be a problem, but it can also be such a godsend because these principles can go all over the world. I'm excited when I get emails from Bulgaria, from Romania, from, from Ireland, from Scotland, from Africa, all over the world. People are hearing the message on how you can present your bodies living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God. Such a reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, to the, world, to the way this world eats, to the way this world drinks. But notice what Ellen White says. She says, disease is an effort of nature to free the system from conditions that arise because of a violation of the basic laws of health. She shows it's actually not the enemy. It's a system that the body is cleaning. It's the system where the body's getting rid of waste to try and reestablish right conditions back in the system. When you read the word of God, when you read the writings of Ellen White, it is no puzzle as the best way to treat the body. When the Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. When you, when you allow God to transform, to transform your mind, when you make the decision to know and love God, he, sends, uh, he says, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my ways. Yes, through Bible principles. Yes, through the Ten Commandments. But absolutely through the laws of health. Otherwise, the Bible wouldn't say, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies living sacrifices, holy, acceptable to God. 
be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove, who to? That you may prove what is that good, acceptable and perfect will of God to yourself. Start going to bed early. Start drinking more water. Start eating a plant-based diet. Start getting the stimulants out and prove, prove to yourself this works. I feel so much better. Then you are now, you now have the authority to say, why don't, to the next person, try going to bed earlier. <laughs> try drinking more water. It made such a difference in my life. Can you see what's happening now? That you may prove, yes, to yourself, but to everyone who lives with you. We are not islands. Everything we do affects everybody that we come into contact with. That you may prove what is that good, acceptable and perfect will of God. As it says in Hebrews chapter 12, starting at verse 1, Wherefore, seeing then that we are compassed about with so great a crowd of witnesses. Who are these witnesses? Our family, our extended family, our neighbours, our friends, the people we work with, the people we see once a week at church, the people we see now and then down the shop, the relatives that we see once a year. Can you see we're going further and further out? Let's go even further. Let's go outside the planet. Outside the planet, there are other worlds. The Bible tells us that. And they're all watching. The angels, they're all watching because there is a deceiver out there. There is a deceiver who says they cannot do it and they will never do it. The Bible says that great deceiver who has deceived the whole world. That's why don't be transformed to this world because the deceiver has deceived the whole world. Don't let him deceive you. The Bible is Satan's detector. Read the Bible and see the clear truths for yourself. It's so nice to know truth. You see, the devil says they'll never be able to do it. Let us prove to all those other worlds, those heavenly beings, the people we see once a year, the people we see once a month, the people we see once a fortnight, the people we see once a week, our family. Seeing then that we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, there's another cloud of witnesses. We've just gone outside our body, outside our house, outside our town, outside our world. Let's go inside. Let's go inside the body now to the cells. Your hair is an illustration of the way you're drinking and eating. Our massage therapists tell us that you can tell when you massage a person how much water they're drinking. You can tell when you massage a person if they exercise. That one's easy. One of my massage therapists said to me, I massaged a, a lady in her late 60s today. Her muscle tone was amazing. She said, I massaged a girl last week who was 20 and her muscles were like flab. Muscle knows no age. Whether you're 9 or 90, you can have strong, firm muscles. Our cells are a testimony. They're a witness to how we're living. They witness to whether we're going to bed early. They witness as to whether we're drinking enough water. They witness as to the nourishment as to the quality of the food that we're eating. They're witness as to how much sun we're getting. They're, they're witnesses. Seeing then that we are compassed about with so great a crowd of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. As one writer said, clear the king's highway. Get, get those rocks aside, clear the king's highway. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us and run with patience the race set before us. The race. Are we in a race? We are in a race. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 9, starting at about 25. Know you not that everyone that runs in a race runs all, but one receives the prize? Therefore so run that you may receive. Every man that strives for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, we an incorruptible. The writer here is referring 
to the Greek games, very famous games. I guess we have the parallel today in the Olympic games. Have you seen the training that the Olympian athletes go through in preparation for the Olympic games? Only the best from every country is sent. And there were probably hundreds who trained hard who didn't quite make the grade. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. In the Greek games, the prize was a, a, a wreath put in the head made out of vines. It certainly was corruptible because within a week it was looking very sad. There was a lot of prestige around these Greek games. In fact, the winner of the games, not only he and his family were given great honours, but the town they came from. Know you not that we that run in a race run all, but one receives the prize? Therefore so run that you may receive. Every man that strives for the mastery is temperate in all things. They do it to obtain a corruptible crown, we an incorruptible. Notice the previous part. Every man that strives for the mastery is temperate in all things. That's one of the laws of health, temperance or abstemishness. There are some things that should not enter the human body if you're looking for optimum performance. So the word abstemishness means abstain. Abstain from the things that will harm you, but moderation in the good things. Every man that strives for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, we an incorruptible. What's it talking about? It's talking about the race to heaven. Everyone may win. We do it to obtain an incorruptible crown. I therefore so run, but not as uncertainly. You see, these athletes in the Olympic Games, no one knows if they're going to win. Am I going to win, but I'm going to give it my best shot? Every man that strives for the mastery is temperate in all things. They do it to obtain a corruptible crown, we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, but not as uncertainly. So fight I, but not as one that beats the air. I keep under my body. I bring it into subjection. If by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself might be a castaway. The qualifications for me to stand here and share these basic principles with you is that I live the life. I should not be standing here if I'm not drinking enough water, if I'm not going to bed early, if I'm not eating nourishing food. They are the qualifications. That is what God requires because God says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies living sacrifices holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. It's a very reasonable service. And so when Hebrews chapter 12, starting at verse 1 says, Therefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us and run with patience the race set before us. Looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is now set down at the right hand of the Father. Wherefore consider him, who endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your mind. For you have not yet resisted under blood, striving against sin. It takes effort but it is well worth the effort. It's like anything in life, any business venture, your bank account, your garden, the more you put into it, the more you will receive. It's just a basic law. So I would encourage each one of you to take time to read the Bible, to take time to compare your life with those eight laws of health, to compare your life with the Ten Commandments, to compare your life with the life of our Saviour. And if you feel that you are not quite up to the mark, I've got some good news. We have a Saviour who is able. In Jude 24, the Bible says, Now unto him who is able 
to present you faultless before his father's throne, his father's glory with exceeding joy. It is God's joy to present us faultless before his throne. He is able. He is able to keep us from falling. So through his mercies, through his grace, we can each do it. No wonder Hebrews in chapter 4, it says, Let us therefore come boldly to that throne of grace, that we might obtain mercy and grace to help in every time of need. 